Here we go. I'm doing episode five. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, a lot of people say that this is the best Star Wars movie, and I'm not sure if that's necessarily able to be disputed or actually even defended because I'm about to point out some major flaws and drawbacks that this movie actually has. There's a few continuity errors that I've been able to pick up the multiple times that I've watched this. I haven't watched it multiple times today, but I think I've seen this close to maybe <clears throat> God knows how many times because I've been watching it over the 25 plus year, the 25 years that I've been here on this planet. So, number one thing that I saw at the beginning was Vader knew Luke as far as him as Luke Skywalker and then you, you which is all right cool he did his research on him and then he learned about him or he felt him through the force or whatever con you want to go through uh or whatever thing you want to go through but and then you get to a few scenes later i think it's maybe like 10 15 minutes later as far as movie time goes and Vader is in front of palpatine as far as this point is the emperor and <clears throat> The Emperor tells him that this is the son of Anakin Skywalker. And I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's just, obviously this was made in close to around 1980. And the prequels came out in 99 to 2004. So obviously they didn't have this whole plan. But Skywalker isn't a common last name. <laughs> it's not like my last name of Green where you can throw a stick and probably hit about 10 of us. Like we've got a crap ton of Greens that might not even be related. So... It should have been understood from him at the beginning that it was the son or someone relative, probably even just the son of Anakin Skywalker. And I know at this point he wasn't, Darth Vader wasn't Anakin Skywalker because they didn't do it until like halfway through shoots that they decided, you know what, we're going to make him his father instead of having Obi-Wan killed his father, which is what they filmed. And then James Earl Jones and Luke, or Mark Hamill, uh, knew the real thing of what was going on. Um, another continuity error was... The timeline that I found out, uh, it looked to be like it was all in like a good a couple hours span as far as in their universe. But if you look at the way Luke looks throughout the scenes on Dagobah and his time with Yoda, you can see it's actually at least a couple of days. You can see the distress on his clothes. You can see the, the fact that they eat and dinner and they have multiple nights and multiple dinners and stuff like that. So you can see that there is time elapsing. Days are going by on time. But even through research and through like Wikipedia and stuff like that, you can't really define exactly when his training began and ended on Dagobah before going to Bespin in Cloud City. So some people have pointed out that it might be 7 to 21 days. Some people have said it's anywhere between 30 plus minutes, which is the amount of time on screen that he was getting trained, to about 6 months. So there is no real time problem uh, like real time structure to how long he's actually being trained and then you can get to they go back and forth between the A and the B story between Aunt Luke getting trained on by Yoda on uh, Dagobah and Han and Leia evading the uh, the Empire's fleet through the asteroid field so it feels like it's the same amount of time but I don't think it is because you have that time where they have to travel to uh, to Bespin and then you have to have the time for when they're attached to the whole of the Star Destroyer. You have to have the amount of time of how long they're actually in the asteroid field and in the asteroid itself. So there's a lot of time that's possibly going by that we don't necessarily get to see the exact time loop that is going on in this movie. And that is a big drawback for me as a viewer and as a writer. You want to be able to nail that as far as how long is this movie in their universe, in this these type of things that you go off for TV shows like 24 where you know that every episode is an hour of that one day for Jack Bauer or I believe that was his name I didn't really watch it my mom did but uh, so it's like you can see that type of drawback and another drawback is how did Luke fail while in the cave I believe that he failed like cuz yes he killed Vader in the cave I think he failed because he used his anger he went in there with his weapons he went in there with anger kind of like not knowing but kind of apprehensive to it instead of just letting his feelings and emotions just be calm and guided by the force so again a lot of people want to say if ray didn't get any training then luke didn't necessarily get any training and all this other stuff between the different trilogies i believe that this was a couple of 
either at least a couple of weeks of training so Luke was a little bit more trained in the ways of the force than what we actually get to know on screen. And then that is why he stands toe to toe with Vader. But again, a lot of people are like, if he only had a couple weeks of time to train at minimum, probably roughly around there, and Vader has had years upon years to perfect his Jedi training and Sith training, then how is he being bested by Luke? But he doesn't get bested. In either of these films, he doesn't lose to Luke, really, if you really want to get into it. And I'll get into that side of it with the next fight against Luke and Vader in the next movie. But in this one, Vader isn't trying to kill him. Vader is trying to wound him, disarm him, and get him to believe that there is no other way than coming with me. So he's trying to make sure that Luke doesn't win, but he doesn't want to kill him either, which is technically how you win a fight, is you either knock the person out, or you kill them, or they just quit. Either way, but in this film, it's usually kill, um, and stuff like that. So it's just like, uh, you get all these different things of not lining up and that's why to me this can't necessarily be the best movie for the uh, for the saga is because of the time errors that I have been able to pick up obviously there's still a good story being told and I'm not saying it's a bad film because of these errors every single one of these movies does have an error somewhere or multiple errors somewhere in them and you just have to look for them but a lot of people just want to call this the best one and I'm guessing it's because Vader took center stage as the antagonist. There wasn't no Moff Tarkin. You just saw Vader being Vader. Vader killing people because they disappointed him because they failed him and they didn't do what they were supposed to do. You have him just looking menacing. You have him being the heir apparent and what a villain is supposed to be to the protagonist. The protagonist for Luke was kind of just he wasn't trained. He was he wasn't centered around one emotion, he was still trying to find himself, and then you have Vader who was very much in control, very much knowing his place in life. And that's the difference between them, and then you see, that's not necessarily his arc, but this is just like them two going back and forth, and you just see that that whole story arc does get a lot of push as far as what is being told. Also point out, Akbar wasn't the first one to say it's a trap. In this movie, Leia says it straight to uh, Luke, but for some reason, Akbar gets maimed more than Leia. I just found that hysterical. Uh, obviously, I love the banter between uh, 3PO and R2. They are always a classic. I can always love watching them on screen together just because of their back and forth banter. I loved the, I guess you can call it sexual tension between Luke and Leia because they, obviously Han is interested, Leia is seeming like she's interested, but they're not crawling together. And there's just frustration, there's issues. And I loved that tension between them. And then it doesn't necessarily get played out as much. And that's what I loved. And that's what Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, failed at. Attack of the Clones was, this is the romance. This was pushing it forward. This one was, it was subtle. And to me, that's a better love story. I don't like romance movies. And it doesn't really have a place in this saga. And then you can even see that in the so uh, sequel trilogy, which I would definitely be getting into. And I can't wait to get into those. Because there's a ton of hate for that trilogy. For no reason. But I conclude... My review, my thoughts on Empire Strikes Back, I will always want to watch this. I would love this movie. I love all of Star Wars, so I'm not saying that this is a bad movie or that it's not a good movie. I'm just saying that there are flaws, and I don't think with the, it being the best, being quote-unquote the best, you can overcome the flaws that it has. That's why I always say Episode 3 is my personal favorite. P.S. Little addendum, I guess, is something I forgot to say that I just thought of. Uh, whenever Han is attached to the Star Destroyer and then he kind of detaches with everyone and floats away with the trash. If you think about it timeline wise and watching it from 1 to 5, um, even though this wasn't necessarily the thing then you can kind of piece it together. The reason Boba Fett knew that Han would likely try to do this is because Obi-Wan did it in episode 2 whenever he was tracking them to Geonosis. So it's kind of a callback or I guess episode 2 was a callback to that moment to explain it and I liked it. I really do like that they included that in the prequels just to try to tie it over to the sequel or the original. So it was a good move. I liked it. Still a fun movie to watch. I always say to go watch it, even though everybody in the Star Wars fandom loves it. So that's my review. I'm about to get into episode six, Return of the Jedi, and come back for that. I'll see you in a few hours.